So the method that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking the next button here to see if it exists. And if it does, I'm going to be scraping the URL from it and then moving on with that page. So on this page here, we can see that we go up to six. On page five, I have this list here, the pagination, and we have a class with the link in it that says a last. If I go to the next page and have a look at the same thing, we'll see that the next button has disappeared and we can see we have no link and it just has a slightly different class a dash disabled a dash last so we can use that so i'm going to go to our code now and i'm going to uh, import the modules that the packages that we need so we're going to be needing request html from this one to be able to scrape amazon so from requests uh, html we're going to import html session and that's going to let us actually scrape the page then we need to set up our s is equal to html session which lets us access this easier I'm going to go ahead and grab the URL for this page that we were just looking at, uh, but I'm going to go back to page one and I'm going to copy it out. And I'm going to show you how I'm just going to chop it up a little bit first. So we've got this long URL here, but we actually don't need this afterwards for the now. So I'm going to remove that. So we're basically just saying here, and that's our search term there you can see. The next thing that we want to do is we need to write a function that actually gets the data, and then we can do our um, find if the button exists and then go from there. So we're also going to need beautiful soup four. So I'm going to do from BS4, import beautiful, I can't ever type this word, there we go. <laughs> so now let's write our first function. So the first one, what we want to do is we want to take the URL of the page and we want to return the soup out, which we can then use to pass the HTML of. So I'm going to call this one define for df for define our function, get data, and we're going to give it a URL. And then within this, I'm going to do our r is equal to s.get because we want to use the session that we're creating up here and then the url and then we want to take that text variable that we get from our r response sorry the text from our r response and we want to put it into our soup so we can say soup is equal to and then it is going to be beautiful soup and then we want the r.text and we want to use the html.parser so if this doesn't work or you get any errors, I would print out the text value and just check that it doesn't say anything like uh, bot or capture or anything like that. But if you're doing exactly what I've done, you should be exactly, you should be fine. This is my method for web scraping Amazon at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to return the soup out of this function. So what this is going to do is that when we give this function a Amazon URL like this, it's going to return the soup, which is going to be all the HTML that we can then look and search in with um, beautiful soups find or find all. Just to test that this works, I'm going to run this. I'm just going to say print, and we want to print whatever comes out of our function, get data, and we're giving it our URL, which is this one here. So this should print out the whole of the soup in its entirety, uh, which will be everything from this page. There it is. We can see it all here. And within that is the HTML of all the code that we actually want, the products, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So we, what we can do is we can actually search within that um, soup to find whether that next page button exists. Now I'm going to do that in another function and then we can see the two work together. So I'm going to say uh, define for our new function. I'm going to say get next page. And we need to give this the soup that we're going to give it. So I'm calling it soup here. It doesn't matter what the name is, but this is what we're going to give it. Uh, we're going to give it the soup that comes out because that's where the information is. So what we want to do here is we want to find to see that find that element if it's on the page. So I'm going to say page is equal to soup.find. And let's go back to our page. Scroll to the bottom. And I'm going to hover back over this. And if I come into, you can see where the pagination actually starts up here. I'm going to find this class first, just so we only get this list, just in case there are other list items on the page. So I'm going to say soup.find, and it was unordered list, and the class was this. So that's our page. And we're going to say, if not page.find, because we're now searching in here. So because we're using if not, we need to go to our page and find the the next button that is that doesn't have an actual button so on the last page and we're going to say if this um, element is not on the page so we're going to copy that and i'm going to say find li and the class was this so if that doesn't exist so that's basically yeah if that doesn't exist our url is going to be the a tag that is within the list where the next button is so now i need to go back a page so we're saying if that element doesn't exist, we want to find the link, which is to the next page here, here. So we're gonna say, take copy this, and we're gonna say URL is equal to, and because if we just check this again, we can see that this doesn't have, this isn't a complete URL, it has, doesn't have the amazon.co.uk bit at the start. So I'm just gonna complete that uh, manually here. You could add this as a variable in the top if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do, uh, I think I need www.amazon.co.uk. 
and then we're going to say that is plus. I'm going to turn this into a string and I'm going to say uh, page.find and our li tag and the class is a dash last like that. And within that, so we're now, let's go back to our tree, let's make this a bit more clear. So I've started in here and now I'm looking inside this uh, list element here. So we need to find the A tag within that. So we can just chain these um, find term, find methods together. So we can now just do dot find and we can say, let's find the A. And that was, I've forgotten already. We should just be able to find the A tag because that's there. And then we want the href from that. So this is quite a long, um, long line here but basically what we're saying is that if it doesn't find this class on the page which was the one that where the, the next button is blanked out it will find it will create a url and we're going to start it with our string here and we're going to add in a string of we're finding the uh the list item that was a last which had the link in and then we're just saying from there dot find the a and then the href from that if i say then we return out of our url function here we return the url and we can say else return nothing. What this function does then is it searches the soup, which is the HTML code of the page. It searches for the pagination. If it doesn't find this element, it then constructs our URL for us here, Mr. Comma, and it returns that URL. If it does find that, it returns nothing. So we can just use this function normally in our code. So what I'll do is I will say, uh, let's check that it works. So we'll do get data so we can call this soup and we can save that into our variable. And then we can do uh, get next page, which will be called our function soup. And I will, let's print that out. So this should return us a full URL for the next page, except I've missed a bracket. There we go. So I missed, I just had my brackets in, a, in the wrong order here. So I've sorted that out now. If we run this, we'll get our next page URL. There we go. So we can see in here, it says page is equal to two. Uh, before what i've done is maybe done a, a loop for a for loop with the range where it adds the number into the page but that's that does work and that's a good option but i think this is a bit neater and now that we've got this function written you can save it and anytime you do any amazon scraping you can just paste it back in and away you go so i'll show you it working in a loop so if i was say the only function i'm missing really here is the pass function so i'm just going to return the title of the page every time um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say well true so this loop will run indefinitely and until we break out of it and then I'm going to say our soup is our thing here. And then I'm going to say our URL, which is what we're returning from this function, is equal to that. So if we get a good URL out here, we'll get that back. And now I can say if not URL, so if, if the function returns nothing, we can just break out. So what that will do is if, um, and I'll just put print the URL here. So this is the sort of loop we could use. If we had a pass function, we could just stick it in the middle here and get the information from the page. I'm just leaving that out for this explanation. But we're saying whilst it's true, so this will run indefinitely until it breaks, we are getting the data from the soup and then we're creating our new URL from this function that we created here. And if it returns nothing, so here, when if we find this element, we return nothing, it breaks out. And for each page, I'm just gonna print the URL uh, and you'll see the page, page URLs just flick through up here. So we can see there's one, two, two, three, four, five, six, and up to six, so that was all the pages. Bearing in mind that we started on page one, I believe. Um, so we actually scraped that page first here, so we didn't generate, that's why we didn't generate a page one here then. So that's it guys, hopefully you've found this useful. Um, it's quite a cool way of getting the pagination to work. So anywhere on Amazon that you're scraping, that you see these um, buttons, which is across most of the site, that function will work. So we can now save this and we can just use it wherever. So what we could do is we could create our own Amazon scraping package and we could say, we could just import this function from it and, and save it. So that's quite a cool way of doing things. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this, hopefully it's been useful. Hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, stick some comments down below. I try to respond to as many as I can, let me know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.